Hello everybody, and welcome back to Monday Night Arena Fight. Uh, this week's format is going to be a little bit different. I lost my uh, audio, and so I'm going to be more narrating. Uh, we're getting into a Dominaria draft, and here I start with a, a pick between the Coldwater Snapper or Raph Capuchin. I ultimately end up on going with Raph and trying to hit uh, the historic deck, uh, Blue-White. But I soon abandon. well, not soon, I abandoned that uh, partway through the draft. Alright, uh, with this pick, I'm going to take Nabon and hope to hit some wizards with some comes into play abilities. Trying to stick to the historic deck, I am going to take the Sanctum Spirit here just to uh, keep up with theme. I did think about taking the uh, Blink of an Eye but I thought that would be a better pick. I kind of waffle here on whether I want to take the Primeval's uh, Glorious Rebirth or something else. Um, I think I end up taking the Lance. Yep. And then I take Sage of Latinam here just because I figured if I'm going Historic, I'd probably pick up a lot of artifacts and be able to sacrifice them for card draw. Uh, sticking with the historic... No, I did not take the Jillagent Excavator here. I think I stuck with the Cold Water Snapper. Yep. And then I take a Power Stone Shard here. I figure getting up to the mana quicker would be good. Uh, take the, uh, Artificer's Assistant. Uh, Sorcerer's Wand here, I believe. But I do think about the other two blue cards in the pack. But I thought I might hit uh, more wizards, uh, an opt, a counter spell, uh, a card I'm not going to play, another card I'm not going to play, and then a Homerid Explorer. Alright, this pick was really easy. I just took the In Bolus's Clutches. Uh, it's a historic spell, so it's very good in the type of deck I was trying to build. I think I edge out on the Homerid Explorer here, just because I really like that card in draft. And then wished it was a wizard. Um, no, don't remember what I take here. I think it's the Drake, just because it's a decent flyer without kicking it, and a pretty good flyer when you do kick it. Uh, I did look at the artifacts for synergy with the Sage of Latinam, but uh, I think I take the Drake. Yep. All right, and then with this choice, uh, it's either the Artificer's Assistant or the Blink of an Eye. Uh, I wanted to push going as fast as possible, so I take the Assistant. Uh, here I take the... Sarah's Disciple, because I'm still trying to build blue-white at this point. Uh, Journey Mage. Uh, the Sentinel of the Pearl Trident, because it can flicker things. And it has Flash. Uh, Karn's Temporal Sundering here, because uh, I figured I'd probably have enough legendary stuff to use it. I looked at my top end and decided I needed a divination more than I needed another big creature. A wizard there, and then some other picks. Still trying to stick to blue-white at this point, I end up taking Tashar. And then here, I'm thinking... What I want to do, whether I want to splash green for Shauna, but I think I end up taking the Tragic Poet so I can get back my Imbolus's Clutches. And then a Deep Freeze. A Joyrus Familiar. Uh, just Rare Draft Yawgmoth's Vile Offering there. Another 
Use for removal. Another tragic poet. Uh, I think I take the Homerate Explorer here. I think about taking the rescue just because it's more useful than the Homerate Explorer. But uh, end up there. Take the Merfolk Trickster. An arcane fight. Another tragic poet. Opt. And another assist. Okay. So now in deck building, I'm just trying to figure out. Uh, I think it was 16 cards I had to cut. Uh, the cards I took. Um, I end up actually cutting all the white here except for Wrath. Um, I don't know. I just thought I had a pretty strong mono blue deck. But uh, I still wanted to have Raph in there for the flash. So. <clears throat> uh, I think only once did it become a problem uh, throughout these games. I think only once did it uh, become a problem that I didn't have the one planes in my deck to cast Raph. But overall, uh, it ran pretty smoothly. And it was really fun to actually play this deck. So I'll just let my uh, let me finish building the deck here, and then we'll move on to game one. All right, my first game here is against Whale Wars. Uh, I start off with a pretty decent hand. I uh, think that with the three lands, I can get there or get something going. So I start off uh, on my turn with the assistant and then just start playing lands. Me and my opponent both play lands for a minute. Uh, and then my opponent drops a creature and then enchants it which turns out to be a threat and my plan was to play the shard this turn but that is a serious attacker so I decided to deep freeze it and just get him for one my opponent responds with their Tishar and I have nothing else to do other than play uh, the Power Stone Shard. I ship uh, Karn's Temporal Sundering to the bottom of my deck because uh, I can't play it yet. My opponent gets out a Saga, and so I respond by playing another Shard and then bouncing their Tishar. This forces them to put a counter on their creature with Defender. and redeploy their Tishar. Uh, I then go ahead and get some air defenses in play, but I won't be blocking the Tishar for a while, especially not when it gains first strike. And then we'll trade. Uh, they play a precognition field. I don't want my opponent to have that, so I Wizards retort it. And then me and my opponent decide to go ahead and race him with his 2-2 flyer and me with my 2-1-1s. And just spend a couple of turns trading blows. I'll leave my 3-2 back because I don't want it to get blocked by the 2-5 my opponent has. And I draw a land after land, so... My opponent then places uh, Arcane Flight on their flyer, which gives it a plus one, plus one boost. I put out a Joyra's uh, Familiar and ship a raft to the bottom because I don't have the planes I need to play him. 
Now at this point, my opponent has a bunch of cards in hand, so I expect a trick, but I need to get the trade, so I try and kill off this Tashar. I get out an Adamant Will, and so he kills off my two blockers. I try an Arcane Flight, one of my dudes, but he has a counter spell in hand, and rewinds. And then I spend a time just kind of uh, taking some hits. I th yeah, my opponent gets rid of the enchantment, keeping his one creature down. But then I draw in Bolus's clutches. Now I had almost written off this game as a loss, and I get rid of a planes because I don't need it anymore. But with that one steal, it's put me back in the game and in a position to race. Okay. My opponent throws out another flyer, and I trade with his two creatures to get them both off the field. I then just start attacking with the 3-2, hoping for a trade, but my opponent doesn't. So I double block and we trade there. I now have a removal spell for my opponent's first creature they play. And I just keep putting creatures on the board. Attacking my opponent. Now my opponent makes a play mistake here. They misclick on preventing damage. And they prevent damage to my wizard. But they also gain three. So... That really helps me out a little bit. Uh, needing to go for the win, I played the Homerate Explorer. And then I can attack for lethal next turn. And my opponent can see it. Okay, starting out game two, I'm playing against Raiden. I look at my hand, and this is, uh, I say, one of the better hands I can get, just because I have the planes and the raft in my opening hand, plus things to do before that. So I start off uh, with my first turn with the assistant, like I did last time. I then move into playing the uh, Diligent Excavator and get in with the bird. My opponent then drops a 3-2, and I decide to hold back on developing my board this turn. But I get in with the bird anyways. When my opponent goes to combat, I allow him to attack with the 3-2, or allow them to attack with the 3-2. I then tap down the blocker and block with my flash 2 I then leave open 4 mana, since Raph has Flash, I decide not to do anything. Uh, I was going to trade off my 1-1 one -one for their 3-1, but then they have a Shield of... Uh, shield of the Realms, which prevents 1 damage, and I didn't feel like trading off uh, more creatures if they had a trick. I just put Raph into play, mill some cards, uh, leave Imbolus's Clutches on top of my deck. And then I start attacking in the air and deploy a Hummer and Explorer. And another bird. Now the Hummer and Explorer is just there because uh, it's actually one of my favorite cards in Dominaria. But I do not feel any compunctions to save it. So I just throw it under the bus during the next attack step. My opponent takes a minute to choose what they want to do. And then they choose to only get in with 3-1. Uh, I feel that's a fair trade, so I go ahead and trade off. And then they have a, another Overseer. I draw a Divination, so I deploy it. I uh, get a island and then hold on to my three mana. 
trying to bluff that I might have a counter spell. Or some kind of trick. My opponent gets in with their 3 1. I let it through because I am winning this race, 5 in the air. And then they play out a Tiana. And I just look at my hand and go, <laughs> yeah, that was good. So I flash out this Power Stone Shard and get all my historic effects. And then I steal the Ranger. And leave a counter spell on top of my deck in case this game goes one turn longer. Uh, swing with all my flyers. And pass the turn. And without my opponent's Angel, I believe they just feel like they don't have any way to win, so they concede. Alright, game three starts. And I look at my hand and decide that although there's four lands and three spells, there's nowhere for it to go, and I mulligan it away. Then take a look at this hand and accept that uh, with an island and an opt and an island on top, this was a better hand. So I go ahead and just pass my turn on the first turn and opt at the end of my opponent's turn. I find something that's not a land, so I ship it to the bottom and get a Artificer's Assistant. I do draw a third land after that, and play the bird. Me and my opponent then go back and forth for a couple of turns, him missing uh, land drops and me just, just attacking, attacking for one in the air. air. He, he gets, gets his fourth, fourth land, but after that, that I think he misses, misses a couple of land drops. Uh, enough, enough that he has, has to discard the hand size next turn, I believe. When they discard, I find out they're playing a three-color deck instead of just a blue-white deck I thought they were playing. Because they discard a right uh, to Bells and Lock, or right of Bells and Lock. And I just keep playing lands and attacking. My opponent finds their fifth land and plays out a Sphinx. They look at the top of their deck and leave them on top. Uh, I have a Invulse Sludges, which I immediately use to take their Sphinx. Uh, not only does it clear the air, but it also allows me to cast my Karn's Temporal Sundering. Uh, with that, my opponent found their sixth land and plays a Hexproof Turtle. I get in for an attack. My opponent then makes his turtle fly so that he can block the flyers I have. And then my opponent makes a mistake here. They play a Teferi, but they don't take their Sphinx back. Instead, they just draw a card and untap some more. I won't hide from the world any longer. Keep up the pace. And this allows me to play Karn's Temporal Sundering because my Sphinx is legendary with Inbolus' Clutches. So I bounce the Arcane Flight, give myself another turn, My opponent tries to syncopate, but I have two mana open, so I can uh, pay for it. The Deep Freeze doesn't help me here because of the Hexproof, so I ship it to the bottom. And then my opponent concedes. Alright, next game. I uh, take a look at my hand. There's three lands and a Power Stone Shard, so I think this is a pretty good hand to keep, so I do. Start out this time and just play up to the third land. Uh, I also draw Homerate Explorer, which I can drop on turn four, whether I found a land or not, but I did find another land. My 
opponent then divinations and hits me for one. I'm able to play out an Artificer's Assistant and the Explorer, kill my opponent for four, and try to deter my opponent's 1-3 from attacking. They have other plans, however, with a Time of Ice that taps down my 3-3. I'm not too worried about the Time of Ice at this point, because if it just bounces my Homerate Explorer, I get another mill off of it. So I attack him with my 1-1 Flyer, which isn't going to block. My opponent then bounces their Time of Ice, so that they can hopefully get more out of it, I think but it really wasn't going to work that well for them. They attack him with their 1-3, I flash into the Sentinel. I misread the Sentinel and thought it could blink any permanent, but it's only a historic permanent, so I blink out my shard and lock their 1-3 to kill it. On the next turn, I can either use the Journey Mage uh, to bounce the 4-4, but I leave it up mana for the Wizard's Report. so that the Time of Ice can't hit me. This turn, I throw out the 3-2 to bounce the 4-4 and attack with everything. My opponent then drops a uh, Snapping Turtle. And this deters me from attacking on the ground anymore. I uh, use the Artificer's Assistant to leave uh, an opt on top of my deck. Oh, nope. I instead attack with everything, figuring that just getting the extra 3 damage through is helpful. So I lose one creature, but I kill off uh, one of their creatures. Now, with two 4 power creatures, I'm deterred from ta attacking on the ground. So I ship a land to the bottom, find my planes, which will be good if I find Wrath and just start getting in in the air. Okay, I find Imbolus' clutches here, so I take the only creature I can. I get rid of the opt this time. Uh, I smell a trap here if I attack with my ground creatures, so I just attack with my flyers. Uh, in case my opponent has the ability to deal with the uh, Imbolus's Clutches. And they take three. Play my planes, and then pass the turn. They do indeed have a blink of an eye, and they bounce their creature to remove my enchantment. And then you can see. Alright, in this next game, I decide to keep a handful of five lands, but this one has a Plains and a Divination, so I'm happy about that. My opponent takes a while to choose whether they want to keep or not, but then ultimately Mulligan's down to five. Uh, my mistake, they go down to four. Which is even more shameful now that I realize it. So I play my planes. And then just start playing out cards. My opponent gets out a Mesa Unicorn. And I go ahead and Divination. I don't feel the need to deal with it this turn. They then add a Pegasus Corsair to their board, which makes uh, their creatures fly now. So... Dropping a blocker isn't helpful, but I want to try and mill my opponent quickly. My opponent finds a Triumph of Gerard and immediately turns their Unicorn into a 3-3. And now it's a 3-3 Flying Life Linker. With that, I freeze, uh, put it under Deep Freeze. My opponent's Triumph of Gerard then could target either of his creatures, so he puts it on his uh, Corsair, his Pegasus Corsair. And then he dubs it. 
I respawn with my Aether Mage to bounce the Pegasus. Removing the enchantment and forcing the Triumph of Gerard to target his defender, or their defender. They replay their Pegasus. I play Opt. Don't find anything really. Attack with everything. And then play out a familiar. Uh, Joy is familiar. Uh. I've seen the green-white decks so far, and I figure they have some kind of trick, so I just allow that to happen. Go ahead and deep freeze their Pegasus Courser. Get out a Diligent Excavator, and then attack with everything. My opponent had another trick to give his creature reach, so I counterspell that. My opponent finds a Call of the Calvary. Now the only thing I'm missing here is a legendary creature, so I could cast the Karn's Temporal Sunder. I don't... Uh, want to trade my Homerad Explorer off, but instead I uh, trade off the 3 2 for nothing, which makes me feel bad because I messed up. And then I proceed to draw lands, I think, for the next couple of turns as I go on. Power Stone Shard is essentially a land in this case. Opponent finds a Sarah Angel. And they have an on Sarah's wings, which now gives them two large flyers. One, two. Uh, remove the abilities from the 3-3, three, three, and then double block it, and then take four from the Sarah Angel. And then Arcane Flight, my Homerid. Okay, so this wasn't where I started drawing a bunch of lands. I apologize for that. That starts after this next block, I believe. I'm able to trade off. Uh, two for two and block their two two, but they find a three two flyer. And then I draw another land and decide I can't win that game. Alright, on to the next game. I look at my hand and quickly decide that I don't want just two lands in it, so I mulligan it away. I keep a land or a hand with the planes in it so that I can cast Wrath later and have a divination. Uh, just play out my cards and opt on my opponent's turn. After I take one, a divination, I decide to keep the uh, excavator on top of my deck and draw it. That way I have a blocker this turn. And then my opponent drops a Cabal Paladin. I decide here that I want to go ahead and just get out the Homerd Explorer instead of holding up uh, Wrath with Flash. And my opponent now plays uh, a Helm of the Host, which hurts me because of the Cabal Paladin. And then I, I believe I equip the arcane or enchant my homerd explorer and play out the familiar and get in for four my opponent equips their cabal paladin with the helm which will give them another token I block the Paladin with the Helm in an effort to time walk my opponent. I uh, then Arcane Flight 
my excavator and attack with my homerid, leaving up mana so that I can play Wrath. At this point, I expected my opponent to just equip their helm to their Cabal Paladin and then attack with the token, if anything, but they come at me full force. Or, no, they didn't equip the helm this turn, I forgot. So they just come at me with the Paladin. Uh, I walk with my 2-4 so as to trade, and then cast Wrath to mill them before it dies. That's right, my opponent has an Imbolus as Clutches. Uh, I Divination here because I need a land, find it, play the Power Stone Shard, and don't attack. My opponent then equips the Helm of the Host onto my Homerid Explorer, which starts milling me, and they attack. I don't want to walk here because I need my Wrath to uh, cast the Legendary Sorcery in my hand, so take an extra turn after this and bounce my Homerid Explorer. Play one of the Homerid Explorers in my hand to mill my opponent. They equip their Helm of the Host onto their token. And then attack with both uh, Homerid Explorers. I'm okay to trade here because I have another Homerid Explorer in my hand. And this removes them, removes the ability for them to actually. Uh, copy any more Homerid Explorers. Find out my opponent's playing a three-color deck, and they're missing green. And here, I think my opponent was trying to Karn's Temporal Sundering, but they don't have a legendary creature or Planeswalker, so they can't cast that spell. They just deploy out a 5-5 Death Toucher, and at this point, I can't come back from this because now they're just going to make a 5-5 every turn. Chump block in the hopes of finding an answer next turn. I do not find one, and I can see Okay, my penultimate game. Uh, I look at my hand and say that three lands and four spells is good, even if I can't cast all but one of them. I uh, go ahead and get started with the Artificer's Apprentice. Attacking for one and getting out a Diligent Excavator. And then find, find the fourth, fourth land, so I'm happy about that. that and just continue attacking my opponent for uh, small bits of damage. I can either deploy the Explorer here or the Familiar. Uh, my opponent has a Counterspell, so I'm glad I put out the Familiar first. I then waffle on whether I want to keep that fifth land or not. I ship it to the bottom. My opponent has an Adelise, so I draw an Opt, look into a Deep Freeze, and immediately want to play that Deep Freeze on Adelise. Getting in for small amounts of damage again. And then take the opportunity to go ahead and play the Explorer to mill some cards. And get in for one. And then take a chance here and just attack with everything. My opponent has a Flash Creature and blocks my 1-3 and kills it. So I deploy another... Uh, Artificer's, Artificer's Assistant, and, and then a legendary, legendary creature to make sure I draw a land next turn. My legendary creature being the Bond. I allow the 3-3 free free to attack in, and then I play my Journey Mage, which now bounces two creatures. So I choose the 3-3 three three and the 1-1 one one blocker, 
an attack for uh, six. My opponent stops three of it. I uh, attacked for seven. It killed off one of my assistants, and then I got in for three. They find a bunch of chump blockers and deploy them. I am now stuck on five lines with two six mana spells in hand, but we trade off birds. Uh, needing my Nabon, I decide not to try and trade with uh, their uh, haste attacker. They kill off my 3-2 and play a Sphinx. I then find my sixth land and am about to cast Karn's Temporal Sundering, but decide that doing in Bolus's clutches first made more sense. Decl uh, decline to attack. Uh, since I could trick, I decide to throw my ground creature in the way of the 2-2. And now I uh, Karn's Temporal Sundering to take an extra turn and remove their biggest blocker. And just attack with the Sphinx twice. Okay. And then this is my final game for tonight. I start out by looking at my hand. There are three cards and uh, four spells. Uh, all of which one I can cast. So I go ahead and keep it. <clears throat> And start out like normal with the Artificer's Assistant, but my opponent this time actually has a first turn kill spell for it. And immediately takes the lead, both in uh, creature kills and life damage here. And then draw a deep freeze. And my opponent deploys a Yavamaya Sapper. I consider deep freezing the Sapper just to stem some of the damage, but instead just deploy out the Power Stone Shard. And feel good about my decision the next turn. When my opponent puts out a valid Omnivore, I then immediately uh, turn that into a 0 4, zero four wall. But my opponent is getting in for 4 each turn now. Valid Soothsayer, which will allow them to draw cards by sacrificing creatures. When they played it, I also thought about uh, deep freezing that, but I figured I had a turn before they uh, really took advantage of it, and if they wanted to, they would sacrifice off their board position. Uh, I then make note that if they attack with their Soothsayer here, then they have a combat trick. But I also can't take six here. Uh, so I decide to block the 2-2. Two -two. That way, if it's just another Fungal Sprout, I still trade with their creature. And then still take a bunch of damage, but not as much as it could have been. And then they play a Confessor. I have to make sure that that creature can't attack me next turn, so I deep freeze it. And then I have already resigned my fate at this point. Uh, I look at the board, and I'm pretty sure I'm just going to die over the next two turns. Uh, this is the only game where I really felt not finding the planes really hurt me, but I don't think it hurt me that badly because I think I lost this game even if I could get out laugh and uh, cast the Temporal Sundering. So, I think you can see. 
And that's it for this week's Monday Night Arena fight. Again, I apologize for the change up on how I do this. Uh, just stuff happened yesterday when I was recording. But I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.